boing, boing, ribbit, ribbit, boing, boing, ribbit, ribbit. Alexa, open WikiHow. Okay, here's WikiHow. Hi, ask me how to do anything. How to take care of frogs. How to take care of frogs. To take care of your frog, feed it crickets, worms, and a variety of other insects. Try feeding your frog three crickets a day to start with, then feed your frog more or less depending on whether it consistently eats all three crickets. Additionally, give your frog clean water every day in a container big enough for it to fit in, since frogs sit in water to absorb it through their skin rather than drink it. Limit how often you handle your frog, because frogs don't like to be touched. Finally, watch for any unusual changes in the color of your frog's skin, which can indicate illness. If you would like each step read out in detail, say read steps. Read steps. Step 1. Familiarize yourself with some good beginner breeds. The first thing to realize when it comes to frogs is that there are a huge variety of frog species available. Some are easy to take care of, while others will require a lot of time and specialist knowledge. If this is your first pet frog, it's highly recommended that you choose a suitable breed for beginners, like one of the following. African dwarf frog. African dwarf frogs are a good option for beginners as they are small, active and easy to take care of. They don't require live food and are complete aquatic. Oriental fire-bellied toads. These frogs are a good option for beginners who want a terrestrial, non-aquatic, frog. They are fairly active and don't grow too large. White's tree frog. White's tree frog is perhaps the easiest tree frog to take care of. They are somewhat active, easy to feed and even tolerate being handled from time to time, which is unusual for frogs. Pac-Man frogs. Pac-Man frogs are large terrestrial frogs which are easy to care for. They tend to be quite sedentary, which lowers their space requirements but may make them a boring pet for kids. As a beginner, you should avoid poison frogs or frogs that cost a lot of money. Poison frogs tend to be quite fragile and have complicated care needs, while more expensive frogs are a risky choice for people new to frog care. It's better to start with an inexpensive, easy breed and work your way up. To continue, say next. Next. Step 2. Avoid keeping wild frogs as pets. Although it is possible to catch wild frogs to keep as pets, there are several things you should consider first. Firstly, it can be difficult to identify what species of frog you have caught. Different species of frogs have very different requirements in terms of foods, temperature, and habitat so if you try to keep a wild frog in the wrong conditions, it could die. If you do decide to take a frog from the wild, Make sure to take note of the surroundings in which you find it. Was it hopping around a leafy, grassy forest bed, hiding under a rock or swimming in a pond? These are the conditions you will most likely need to replicate at home. However, you should still try to find out the exact species of your frog by searching for images online, consulting a frog book or asking a local nature expert. This will help you to identify the frog's exact requirements. Secondly, Many of the frog species found in the wild are facing population declines or even extinction. Taking a frog from its natural environment could be harming wild frog populations, especially if it is an endangered species. Thirdly, sometimes wild frogs can carry diseases. Make sure yours is an active and healthy individual. In fact, taking protected species from the wild is illegal in some areas, so be sure to check your state slash country regulations before capturing a wild frog. To continue, say next. Next. Step 3. Consider the frog's size and space requirements. The size of your frog, when it's fully grown, and the size of the tank it requires should be a top consideration when choosing your pet frog. Sometimes, the teeny tiniest looking frogs in the pet store will become giant monster frogs when fully grown. For example, pixie frogs, whose name would suggest a miniature frog, start out measuring under an inch in length, but can grow to a length of over 8 inches. Large frogs require a lot of space. For example, a fully grown bullfrog will require a 75-gallon, 283.9 liters, tank, or larger. If they are housed in undersized tanks, these frogs can become unhappy and sick. Large tanks take up a lot of space in the home and require more effort to keep clean. 
These frogs will also eat more food, making them more expensive to feed than smaller frog varieties. This is another reason to do your research and find out the exact breed of frog before you buy. To continue, say next. Next. Step 4. Consider the frog's feeding requirements. Before you jump headfirst into buying the cutest, or ugliest depending on your preference, frog in the store, you should take some time to figure out what it eats. Most frog species are happy to eat crickets, worms, such and red wigglers and night crawlers, and other creepy crawlies. However, it's important to keep in mind that frogs usually prefer live food, especially if you're squeamish about that sort of thing. Larger frogs will often require more substantial food, which might include mice, goldfish or guppies. Providing your frog with these items can be a lot of work and is not for the faint of heart. In addition, you will need to consider where the frog's food will come from. Your local grocery store probably doesn't stock live crickets. Do you have a large pet supply store nearby which caters for more exotic animals? Of course, it is possible to find food for your frog in the back garden but this can be pretty time-consuming and unreliable. In addition, garden pests are often exposed to chemical insecticides, which is unhealthy for your frog. To continue, say next. Next. Step 5. Find out how active your species is. Another major consideration is the activity level of your preferred species of frog. This is especially important if the frog is a children's pet, as most kids want a pet who'll keep them entertained. A lot of the larger, cool or weird looking frogs are a popular choice among beginner frog keepers, however, these frogs tend to be the least active and will simply sit still as a statue and sleep all day. This can become boring very quickly. If you're looking for a more active frog, you're better off going for smaller frogs, aquatic frogs and certain species of tree frog, as these will often hop or swim around, making them more fun to look at. You should also bear in mind that even the most active frogs won't do much other than hop around or eat some crickets. You can't take a frog for a walk, teach it tricks or even handle it all that much. Therefore, it's important to consider whether a frog is really the ideal pet for you or your child. To continue, say next. Next. Step 6. Understand that keeping a pet frog is a commitment. It's important to realize that getting a pet frog is not the same level of the time commitment as a goldfish. In fact, a large, well-cared-for frog can live up to 25 years. As a result, you need to be prepared to take care of your frog for many years to come, to feed it, keep its environment clean and care for it when it's sick. You should also think about how you will deal with future vacations as someone will need to care for your frog while you are away. A willing volunteer can be difficult to find if your frog only eats live crickets or even mice. If you get a pet frog but discover it's too much work or too much of an expense to keep, you will have to get rid of it through the proper channels. If you picked a wild frog from your backyard or a local park, you should be able to release it in the same place you found it. Be specific and replace the frog as close to the original location as possible, whether it was underneath leaves on the forest floor or beside a stream. However, if your frog is a store-bought, non-native species, you will not be able to release it into too wild. You will need to give the frog back to the pet store, sell the frog to a new owner, donate the frog to a local school as a class pet, or contact a nearby animal care organization. To continue, say next. Next. Final step. Figure out whether you need a license. In some places, you are required to possess a license to keep certain frogs as pets, especially if they are endangered or poisonous. For example, the African clawed frog is illegal in states like California and Oregon, where it would pose a threat to native wildlife populations if released. Contact your local government office for more information on the licensing requirements in your area. Okay, you've reached the end of the article. To hear it again from the beginning, ask how to take care of frogs. Or, you can ask how to do something else. What would you like to do? Exit.